other people pay for it. That's, that's, that's the way that flies. I think that's a kind of thing. I couldn't believe it. She was so forward about it. Didn't even hesitate. We hadn't even received our meals yet. And here she was, giving me that, it's not you, it's me, crap. Two years I spent with this woman. Two long, happy years. Where did it all go wrong? Was it something I did? Something I said? I guess it doesn't matter now. She's made her decision long ago. Well, I really hope you don't have any hard feelings about this. And I still want to be friends. Would that be okay with you? I wanted to do something. Yell. Jump up. Flip the table over. Hit someone. Go crazy. But I couldn't bring myself to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. to do. I mean, I don't have a job. No girlfriend. No friends. My family hates me. It just, it just feels like my life has gone down the drains, you know? Huh? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, please, please continue. Let it all out. Forget it. It was all getting to be too much for me. I didn't want to live any longer. fix all of my problems right then and there. I could just end it. Some say there's an afterlife. That'd be nice. But others say you're reincarnated in a new body. That could work too. I could start fresh and lead a better life. But others say that there's nothing after death. You just stop existing. But whatever the case, it'd be better than this miserable thing I call a life. There'd be no one to miss me, so that's something. LOL. Laughing. I couldn't remember the last time I made someone laugh. Who was this Tory girl? I barely knew her, and yet I felt a strange connection to her. The next few days flew by like a breeze. I quickly developed a friendship with this Tory girl. She seemed nice and she had a sense of humor. It was kind of how you felt when you were in middle school and talking with your crush. It's strange, I know, talking about someone you barely know being your crush. But a part of me was just enamored by her. The way she spoke, her cute little emoticons. I felt happy again. The days quickly turned into weeks, and the weeks turned into months. Tori and I had become best friends. Soon, 
I had forgotten entirely about my depression. I managed to find a decent paying job that could keep a roof over my head, and I started making new friends. My life was turning around. I didn't even know the girl. She didn't have a Facebook, a Twitter. I didn't even know her last name for that matter. How strange is that? Being best friends with someone whose last name you don't even know. But it didn't matter to me. Tori was on my mind every day in and out. After a while, I made a decision. I needed to meet Tori. To see her. Hear her. Find out who was this girl that turned my life around. But every time I tried to bring it up, she changed the subject. Odd. But I didn't give in so easily. Almost a whole year of texting really did wonders for me. I had developed a knack for writing intricately long and detailed messages. And I used this skill to try and convince Tori to let me meet her. I had it. It took me 1,000 characters. But I had the message. I tapped send, awaiting her response. But it never came. I shrugged it off, figuring she had fallen asleep or something. So off I went to sleep. The next morning, still no reply. This was strange. Normally she would reply within a few hours. I tried not to think anything of it and got dressed for work. I spent the whole day there eyeing the phone, expecting it to light up with a reply. But it never did. I was starting to get nervous. Why hadn't she replied yet? Did something happen? Was I too straightforward? Does she not like me anymore? That thought made me sick to the stomach. Like being broken up with. I got home later that day. Still no reply. Sweat was pouring down my neck. This wasn't normal. Tori was a part of my life this past year, and now she suddenly disappears. I sat there, looking away from my food. I had no appetite. All I wanted was to hear from Tori again. What was this all for? How could she just leave me like that? After everything she's done for me, I was back to square one with a piece of my life missing. I couldn't take it anymore. I may have had a job, money, a house, friends, but without Tori, none of that meant anything to me. I began having thoughts. Thoughts of suicide. Thoughts of ending it all. What if Tori had died? Would I see her again in heaven? That reminded me of my thoughts a whole year ago when I was on that rooftop, contemplating whether or not there was an afterlife. And at this point, it didn't matter either way. I had to do it. And now here I am once again, looking out over the city. I could have chosen anything. I mean, why bother driving all the way out here? I guess it just seems more appropriate, almost poetic. Tori, whoever you are, or were, thank you for turning my life around and making it mean something this past year. You made me happy, and know that what I'm doing now 
is by my own choice. I don't blame you. Hello? Tori? It's nice to finally meet you, John. Don't be afraid. I'm not. I love you. <laughs>